So we are going to end our discussion of loops by talking about a while loop. A while loop differs from a for loop because we use while loops when there is not a definite number of cycles that we want to loop through. So the way that a while loop works is that the um, program keeps repeating the indented code block while a certain condition is still true. So in this case, the condition is that the variable power is less than 100. And as long as the variable power is less than 100, it will go through and do the indented code block. So obviously I have to, uh, power has to have an, uh, has to have a value first, um, otherwise it can't do the check. Um, so what I've done here is set the value of power and then the, um, the thing that is going to make the value of power change is that I'm going to increment the exponent. So I will start with an exponent of zero and then I will go through and calculate two to the exponent power and that's going to be what the power is equal to. And then you may recall this little trick that I did here. This is called uh, an incrementer. So what it'll do is take whatever value is in exponent, add one to it, and then put the answer back in exponent again. So each time this line is executed, the value of exponent increases by one. So, uh, and then it will print the value of the exponent, the value of, of the power that is calculated, and it'll put a tab character in between the two to try to make the numbers line up a little bit better. And then uh, it'll go back and it'll check, is the value of power over 100? If it's not yet, then it's going to do it again. Do the calculation, increment the value of exponent by 1, print it out, and now check and see is power over 100 yet. So it'll continue to do the indented code block um, however many times it needs until the value of power that I calculated is over 100. Up here, I've stuck in a print statement, and you'll notice this is going to be the column headers, so it'll print exponent, and then here I've in inserted a tab character, and then it'll print power, and after it's done executing all the loops up to a power that's over 100, then it'll print this statement right here. So one of the things that um, at that I mentioned is that you have to have an initial value for the value that you're testing. The other thing is that there has to be some way for that value to achieve the um, test that you have set for the while loop. If there is no way for the test variable to ever have the value that you're testing for, then you will have created what we call an infinite loop. The, the um, program will keep running and it will never stop. Um, you can actually make it stop. Uh, I think you uh, can press either control C or control Z and that will make the loop stop. So um, the other thing is that the test is not carried out until after the indented code block has finished. So this is not going to stop when the power is less than 100. It's going to continue if the power is less than 100. So the last time when I calculate the exponent and it goes over 100, it is still going to print that out. And then when it goes back and checks on this Boolean condition here, it will fail to be true, it'll be false, and then it will go and continue on. So let's go ahead and try uh, some examples of this. So here's the example that I gave. Let's see how that works. So the headers don't line up exactly, but that's not too bad. So we can see here it incremented the exponent by one each time, and then it calculated the power each time. 
And as I said, um, it goes ahead uh, when it checks 64 and finds that 64 um, is not enough, then it's going to go ahead and increment this and, and uh, calculate it, the value for 8. Then when it's printed 128, it goes back and checks, sees that it's over 100, and then does not do the indented code block again and goes on and continues with the rest of the code. The last example that I'm going to show is actually, it's a little bit tricky, but it's extremely useful. Before we go into the example, though, I want to um, try this code block right here. So what we are going to do is give the user an opportunity to enter something, and we're suggesting that they try entering the enter key or pressing the enter key without typing anything. But before we do that, let's try um, putting some actual strings. So I print the string cat, and the length of the string is three. Let's try running it again. I'll put the letter A. It, here's the letter A. The length of it is one. Now, what happens if I just hit the enter key without typing anything? It prints nothing and the length of the string is zero. So as you may recall, the string that consists of nothing and has a length of zero is called the empty string. So we're gonna use this as a way to, for the user to indicate when they're done typing uh, items to add to a list. So the condition that we're checking for is whether item is not equal to the empty string. So if the person types something, then the thing that they have entered will not be the empty string, and it will go ahead and allow them to enter something else. But when the person types in uh, the empty string for, or, or just presses enter, which will input the empty string, then item is going to be the empty string, and when it goes back around and checks, it'll say, oh, it's the empty string, I need to stop. So earlier in the lesson, I said that um, why would we ever want to create an empty list? Here is a situation where we could use the empty list. So we'll start off with our word list being empty, but then each time we go through the loop, and the user types something, we will append the item that they typed onto the list. So it'll start off empty, but it'll then have an item added for each time that they type something in. Now, um, as I said uh, in the explanation before, you have to have some value for the item that does not meet the condition in order for it to do the loop the first time. If I uh, don't assign it any value, then it, it won't do the loop. So I've just made the value of item be anything. It doesn't really matter what it is, as long as it's not the empty string. So uh, it will go through, can, uh, add all these items. Now, the problem is the very last time the user, um, when the user does press the enter key without entering anything, it is still going to append the empty string onto the end of the list. So if we, unless we really want the empty string to be on their list of words, we need to remove the last item off of the list. And so um, you can see that uh, one of the ways of doing this is to go through and take the length of the list and then the length of the list minus one is going to be the item number of the last item on the list. So I can tell it to delete the last item on the list and then print what the word list is. This isn't the only way we could achieve this. We could also slice the list and slice the entire list except for the last number and then uh, assign that output to another variable. So there's like in many cases in programming, there are several ways of doing things. So let's go ahead and try running the program. 
All right, so what is my next item? Cat, next item, dog, next item, bird. Now I'm gonna hit enter and it says your list is cat, dog, and bird. Now, just to see what happens if I don't remove the final item from the list, I'm going to comment it out. Let's try running it again. So now you can see that um, the list does contain an empty string. So if I don't want that, I need to have this extra line in here to get rid of it. 